Today on Judge Faith, this sketchy scooter seems like a scam. This is a Chinese scooter. This is a problem that California has had. He thought it was a, like a, a scam. But the seller says the bike was good to go. I registered it in Oregon, but I never drove it. When you're buying a used scooter, as is, it, it's incumbent upon you to do your homework. And later, this landlord says she heard every excuse in the book from this tenant. There were excuses from the beginning, from the first day. She didn't have the rent. Because my grandpa passed away on January, my goddaughter, February, my grandma, April, and then my husband left me. During the time period that you lived there, did you ever pay the full amount of rent for one month? Did you ever pay $1,200 no. in no. one no. single no. month? Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Angelo Quarantis says he bought a scooter that couldn't be registered to drive. He's suing for a refund of $700. He's joined in court by his wife, Paulina Quantra. Defendant Paul Leonard claims he sold the bike to the plaintiff as is, and he owes nothing. Remain seated and come to order. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, this is Quaranta versus Leonard. Thank you, Barbara. Mr. Quaranta? You are suing the defendant for $700 for a full refund of a scooter you purchased from him. Mr. Leonard, you say you are not obligated to give a refund to the plaintiff because you sold the scooter as is. Why don't you tell me about your case? Okay. And who's, who's standing next to you? My wife. My wife, Pavia. Hi, are you a witness as well? He's a witness, yeah. Okay. So tell me about your case. Okay, in, uh, this uh, last March, I, bought, um, I saw online this... Uh, scooter that was interesting to buy because I was needed like to to buy a scooter for for good work. Were for you Miss Corinta, were you um, a part of the purchase as well? I was. Why don't you tell me what happened? Sure. He saw this scooter online and <laughs> uh, showed it to me right away and um, he was looking for something just to get to work with. Um, and was it an ad on Craigslist or another website? <laughs> okay. Craigslist. And, mm -hmm. and uh, so we called the defendant and set up a time when we could come by and look at the uh, scooter. And we sort of had to work around his doctor appointments. Do you have the ad with you? We do not. What did you post? Uh, I posted an ad for a scooter saying that uh, it was, I think, when they called me, it was $925 is what I was asking for it. Um, it had previously been $1,100. Uh, I was telling people in the ad that I had recently had a heart attack in January and that I didn't feel comfortable driving, so it's got to go. And it's sold as is. And so you had it listed for how much originally? Uh, originally $1,100, then when they called, I believe it was $925. Or maybe 950. And is that how much you purchased the scooter for? No, they they, no. Per they purchased it for 700. Okay, so you bargained it down and you ended up purchasing it for 700 dollars. And what happened after you? What kind of scooter is it, by the way? I don't know. I bought it. Uh, I bought it in Oregon and just so I could get around with. What do you mean you don't know? What did you? Yeah, what did you it, do it doesn't have exactly. a name brand like a Yamaha or Kawasaki or anything like that. It's mm -hmm. just a a scooter. Because of before we went to uh, see the scooter. So you did you purchase the scooter? Did it have a brand on it? Okay, it's, what it's was the it, brand? Uh, it, it says Fury on the side. You have a photo? Let me see. I do. Barbara, would you? Can you pull this photo up on the flat screen? I don't. I don't believe Fury is the brand of it. Okay, and is this the, is this a photo of it? Yes, it is. Okay. Okay, so tell me, and you all live in the state of California, correct? That's correct. Okay, tell me what happened after you, now you gave them the title. Yes. And the paperwork to the scooter, right? Yes. And did you take the scooter to get registered? 
the very next day. What happened? Uh, they, what happened when yeah, you went to DMV the next the day? The DMV, they were looking for the uh, secondary VIN number, apparently. It had a VIN number, but uh, it needed a secondary VIN number, which they couldn't find. So you couldn't register it? That's we like, could not. Yeah. So, so what did you do the, next? The, the DMV redirected us to the California Highway Patrol. And uh, we had to wait about a month for that appointment. And in the meantime, we did contact Paul and asked him if he knew anything about it, if he knew about any problems. What did you find out when you went to California Highway Patrol? Uh, we got there, and um, we, I had a brief phone call conversation with the officer who, just from the information I told him about the bike and what the DMV said, they said, it sounds like you're not going to be able to register this, but come on in. We got there. And he's like, he, he said his hunch was kind of correct because he looked at it and said, no, this is a Chinese scooter. This is a problem that California's had. That a Chinese scooter as in it's manufactured in, in yes, China and, it's and not only in the United States? Correct. And so that would explain why a second VIN number did come up? He thought it was up. like a, a scam. Scam. A scam. Coming up, are all states equal? The rules and regulations for scooters and mopeds and motorcycles in California, they can be a bit complicated. And later, did trusting a tenant's excuses add up to losses for this landlord? This is your first time meeting her, yes. correct? Yes, yes. Okay, so why would you trust someone you knew for two minutes? Her? I can understand leaving a pair of shoes or, no, or, I know. or a shirt, but who leaves a dog in their home and moves out? Like, who leaves a dog? Plaintiff Angelo Cuantra says he bought a scooter that couldn't be registered to drive. He's suing for a refund of the purchase price. Defendant Paul Leonard claims he sold the bike as is, so the sale is final. These Chinese scooters, there was kind of a problem with them coming in, people selling them on Craigslist and selling them online. And they are mainly allowed only into the state of California for, as like a parts-only vehicle. They're just sold for parts. They're not road legal, they're, but they're considered gray market. So we asked the California Highway Patrol officer, well, what do we do now? And he said, contact the defendant, have them give you Do you know back. anything about what they're talking about with a scooter not being made in the U.S.? Where did you say you purchased it from? I bought it at an auction in Oregon. And you drove it and registered it in Oregon? Uh, the scooter? I registered it in Oregon, but I never drove it because I don't have a motorcycle license myself. Okay, I, and how did the scooter get from Oregon to California? In my trailer. So you relocated to California and you never had the scooter registered here? Correct. So the first time the scooter was to be registered in California, it appears to be when you tried to take exactly. it to DMV and you With, found out the information. Uh, Correct. Right. Here's what happens in California when you have a scooter like this. First of all, if it doesn't have a secondary VIN number, that means that it doesn't have a federal certified sticker, which means the vehicle wasn't created and manufactured in the United States. It was manufactured elsewhere. And if that is found to be the case, there are a couple of statutes and regulations that govern this kind of vehicle in California. I don't think it's incumbent upon the defendant to know all of those regulations. I found out this information by making one phone call. I made one phone call and got the information in one call. And when you're making a purchase and you're spending $700, it really is incumbent upon on you to do a little research before you make the purchase because he sold it as is and when he sold it to you as is he didn't tell you yes you can definitely go out and register this scooter with the DMV he didn't tell you anything I think it'd be different if he had told you you can take this scooter to the DMV and you can register it because then he would be fraudulently inducing you to buy it the, you knew the make and the model and what year it was no. and you could have taken that to the DMV found out for yourself is this a scooter that we can register Register. Is this a scooter that we can use for the purposes that we want to use it in the state of California? That wasn't incumbent upon him. That was incumbent upon you. So my judgment in this case, verdict is for the defendant. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Plaintiff Celia Acosta claims she handed over the keys to a tenant who wouldn't pay rent and trashed the place. She's suing for $2,455 in unpaid rent and property damage. Defendant Claudia Torres says she had an agreement to pay back rent once she got back on her feet, but was suddenly kicked out by the landlord. Ms. Celia Acosta? Yes. You are suing the defendant Claudia Torres. She is your former tenant and you say she owes you for unpaid rent and property damage in the amount of $2,455? Yes, that's right, Your Okay, Honor. tell me about that. Well, I, we had problems from the beginning. Even from the first month of rent, she didn't have it. 
How did you know the defendant? She saw an ad and called me and, you know, applied for, to get my house for what rent. What was the ad online? Uh, I think it was on paper. Okay, can you describe the property? It's a four bedroom uh, house. It's um, next to my house where I live. What month did the defendant move in? Uh, November. Of 2013? 13. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how long did she live there? Uh, about six months. Did she pay a security deposit? She, yes. How much? 600. Did you enter into a lease agreement? Yes. Do you have a copy of that? Yes, I do. May I see it? Mm -hmm. And when did you first start having problems? From the first day, Your Honor, she didn't have the 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 month of, for the rent, the rent for the first month, and she she didn't have first month's rent. In, yeah. And she was that something it. that you asked her to pay up front before moving in? Yes, and. Um, and she said she had it, so I called her and said, well, you can start moving in today if you want to, and I'll give you the keys, and she said she had it. So I went, and we walked through the house, and um, they, they were ready to move in, so I gave her the key, and, and when I asked for the money, she said, oh, I don't have it, but I'll have it tomorrow. Okay, but you was, didn't take the key back at that point? Uh, no, I trusted her. I don't know why, but... This was your first time meeting her, yes. correct? So why would you trust someone you knew for two minutes? Well, from the application, that it looked like they were people that were working, and I thought that they, that they would have the money, you know? Okay, so how many people moved in in addition to the defendant into the home, initially? Initially, it was supposed to be her grandparents, uh, her boyfriend, and two kids. So what happened? Did you ever get your first month's rent? Uh, and small payments of 100, 200, 400. Excuse me. The first month was paid with the 600 deposit. And, and then not I the first month, the second Claudia. month, that's not when the I first started month. having issues um, paying on time. You I did never... have issues paying on time. Okay, so the we... second month, so let's say November, you move in in November, mm -hmm. you're, you gave her a $600, 600 security deposit. deposit. And you say that was used and for the first month? That was before we moved in. We didn't make a walk in before somebody was moving their stuff out. I paid. But your rent was $1,200 a month. Mm -hmm. So, how much did you pay for the first month when you moved in? When 600 moved or 1200? In? No, 1200. Zero. 1200. <laughs> Coming up, excuses, excuses. Because I stopped working. Um, Your Honor, there were excuses from the beginning. You have an excuse for everything. Plaintiff Celia Acosta claims her tenant wouldn't pay, then trashed the house. She's suing for unpaid rent and property damage. Defendant Claudia Torres says she had an agreement to allow late payments, but was suddenly evicted. When we moved in, I moved in with my grandparents. That's one of the main issues that I moved in. Um, my grandpa started getting sick, so I, I had to stop working. So I told her, you know what, I'm having issues paying the rent on time, this is why, because I stopped working. Um, Your Honor, there were excuses from the beginning, from the first day, she didn't have the rent. And I decided that, you know, it was the first month, so maybe she'll catch up. But it was always the same thing, always excuse yeah, because after, after January, excuse. January, my, my grandpa passed away. But the thing February, that I didn't... my goddaughter. Hold on a second. January, your grandfather passed away? Yes. Okay. Then after that, like, I made a, uh, an agreement um, when I told her that I was, I was moving out of the house because, like I said, my grandpa, January, my goddaughter, February, my grandma, April, and then my husband left me. So that's when I told her, you know what, I'm moving out, I can't make it. I'm by myself. I was considerate, you know, and about was, her grandparents, but I couldn't wasn't. take it anymore. And that's why I was taking responsibility of what I, you know, I was owing her. Um, that's why I, I made this letter saying, you know what, I know I owe you $400 for April, and then I owe you 17 days for May. I knew that. May I see the letter? Barbara, would you hand me the letter? During the time period that you lived there, did you ever pay 
the full amount of rent for one month? Did you ever pay no. twelve hundred dollars no. in one no. single no. month? No. no. Okay, so it sounds like you actually had a landlord. There are a lot of landlords that would have put you out a long time. Oh no, time I ago know, and I'm and not wouldn't be sympathetic to mm -hmm. a lot of the things that you just right. described. But it sounds like you had a landlord who was willing to work with you. Mm -hmm. You admit to owing four hundred and fifty-five dollars in April rent. You're also suing for eight hundred and sixty-five dollars prorated May rent. Tell me about that. Uh, I gave her a three-day notice on, on April fifteenth, so so she had to be out by by uh, May fifteenth. And do you 14th. agree that you did not pay May rent? I do. I pay. Uh, I only had paid her half. I think a little bit over half. Mm -hmm. And I was only. Oh wait, for May? No. May. No. Nothing. I, okay. Nothing. And now you are also suing for damages. Yeah, you but, say uh, that there are seven hundred and thirty-five dollars worth of repair materials, materials you had to purchase. Uh -huh. You have I here have that I have so many photos, Your Honor, of the damages. But the worst thing was it was infestated with roaches, where they were falling on us while we walked through the house. She okay, knew that. you have yes, um, she knew yes, that. yes. She even left. She took up out the, the food from the refrigerator and left it on the counters. Because she kicked me out. Even, even meat. And there were maggots. Did you, there were maggots did you leave, right there. Did you leave the, the home? That was disgusting. Did you leave the house with roaches and maggots? No, and she knew invested? about the roaches. She told me that <laughs> well, So she, the answer is yes. No, I mean, she knew about the, the roaches when I was clean, living there. Claudia, the house was clean. When you moved There's in, proof also. When I you moved in, in, we started having were there roaches, the roaches and yes, maggots in the home when you not moved maggots. in? No, not maggots. So and you chose to move in anyway? The meat that you left in the kitchen. Because you kicked me out. <laughs> you, because you had 30 told days. Me, she, you she had said, 30 days. She said, and you didn't days. even take all your things the out yet. The didn't appear because you left the apartment. No, 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 no. She's saying that this infestation took place Sorry. while you lived no. there. Roaches, there was maggots, roaches when I moved there. Is no. that true? No. Let there were roaches look at the pictures. when I moved there. Let's look at the photos. Moved there. What is this a photo of? That's the kitchen. That's and that's how, how she, left, she left the kitchen? That's how she yes. left it. That's when I was moving out, taking everything. So that was after or, you moved out, correct? Yes. Okay, next, next photo. What is this? That's the garage. The garage. Who took the photo? I did. Why I did didn't you leave even, all the stuff in the garage? I didn't even get to, to take everything. What is this a photo of? That was a crash from, uh, to the wall of the garage with her car. I don't remember that. <laughs> I don't. Did, you, <laughs> There's did, your proof. Car, did your car hit the garage no. and cause damage? Well, not me. I didn't. But you knew about it. No, there's a photo. No, I didn't know about it. <laughs> what is this a photo of? Roaches. The roaches. Alive. Those, they were those alive. Are there. Oh, God. Live roaches. Disgusting. A little bit of them. Um, what room was this in? I believe that's the kitchen. <laughs> But when I took the photos, I, I, I just um, okay. felt like she had abandoned the place. She even abandoned a dog. There was a dog. You left a dog inside of the Because I was supposed house. to go back and get all my things. And she just told me, <laughs> when, you know when? what, you can't come when? back. That's what she said. That's why when? she took Who? all those things. I would sorry, call I'm sorry. Her. I can understand leaving a pair of shoes or, no, or, I know. or a shirt. But who leaves a dog in their home and moves out? Like, who leaves a dog? You, have, you just seem to have so many you have an excuse for everything excuses, no matter what excuses. I ask you you literally do not take responsibility for I am taking anything responsibility. no you don't no, I you am don't. because thank you I'm honest. here and I told her you know this is where I'm moving to if I wasn't going to take responsibility I was just left and disappeared there were just I wanted to start making and payments and when I, I would I be in my full, full even if you are going through a rough time and you don't have money to pay rent you don't have to leave someone's home in a disgusting condition mm -hmm. like that do you understand <laughs>